Tonight on The Big Picture, we're going to cover a subject that is abused, undertaught, and quite frankly, if we don't get it, we're going to lose this generation and the generation to come. It is a subject called legacy. We have with us a guest on here that God has given a download for this season, for this moment on the subject of legacy. His name is David Amos, and he's coming on The Big Picture to show us exactly what we need to know about the subject of legacy. The future depends on it. Well, welcome to the big picture, Bishop David Amos. What a blessing it is to have for you. And yes, the crowd is going wild. I know you can't hear it. You don't have ears, but I can hear them. They are clapping. They are screaming. They're so excited to have Bishop David. Welcome to the big picture. Oh, thank you so much, Bishop. This is an incredible honor. You know, for many, many years, uh, you've impacted my life. I've watched you from a distance on uh, different platforms and just to be able to be here in the room with you is such an honor well thank you and right now at the time of this recording you can see on his shirt iron men conference we we just came out of a tremendous conference of men right. where you know the subject we're talking about is legacy and i know you as much as you love legacy you are just looking back and looking around that room and just seeing legacy unfolding right in front of you what did you think about the conference and the men that we just had the what we were just a part of well, I thought we should have renamed it Legacy Conference. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. <laughs> because, you know, legacy is simply about fatherhood and spiritual sonship. It's about the promises of the fathers becoming the promise to the sons. And as I looked around the Iron Man Conference and the hundreds of men that came from literally all over the country. Yes. And what's amazing is that you've seen spiritual fathers that have impacted these men and Amen. are bringing them together. Um, it was just, it gave me hope, not for the future, but hope for the present. God yes. is doing something uh, in the lives of men all over the country. But you are the director of City Harvest Network, and uh, God is using you. Of course, your spiritual father, Dr. Pa uh, Dr. Rod Parsley, is just a tremendous man of God. And I want to show right here the leadership team here. As you can see, it's being led. Because the subject is legacy. Think about this. The subject is legacy. So we have the founder uh, Dr. Rob Parsley, yo, I mean, my goodness, the legacy personified. Uh, both, he meant so much to me and you. We're going to talk about that right. in just a moment. And then, of course, you know, we have uh, Dr. Wendell Hutchins, which is a tremendous man of God. And there you are with your lovely wife, Amy. Yes. So tell us real quick, um, how did you become a part of what God is doing in the ministry of Dr. Rod Parsley and to help him carry out the mission of vision? Well, Bishop, he truly is a, uh, before being my boss, before being the general overseer of, of the network that I serve in, before being my pastor, he truly is my spiritual father. Um, try not to get emotional talking about it, but I know what fatherhood is mm. through uh, the life and relationship that I have with Pastor Parsley. Hallmark couldn't have put together a better story uh, than what God has with our, our very unique relationship. It started for me when I was young, and I was when I was 14 years old, my mother had brain cancer, and mm -hmm. she was very abusive emotionally and physically. Uh, my dad had a, had a really bad drinking problem. I wasn't raised up in church, and I had been suicidal uh, as a teenager. And, uh, and I was slipping through the channels on television, and I heard for the first time, something that changed my life, the gospel, that yeah. Jesus loved me, wow. that he died for me, and that he could change my life, that he had raised from the dead. And uh, through Pastor Parsley, he was preaching that iconic message, repair of the bridge oh, my with, goodness. with the bridge. And so my mother, she said, you know, she said that you, you can't watch him. He's Pentecostal. That's of the devil because he speaks in tongues. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to ask my mother, well, if speaking in tongues is of the devil, how come you're not doing it when you're drunk? How come it's not in the bar, right? Back, look <laughs> out, look out. But anyway, I, 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 was, I wasn't allowed to watch him, so I would wait. And thank God for reruns. Uh, I would wait till late at night, and I'd go, and I'd find him on the television. I'd record him on a Walkman. Bishop, mm. people don't even know what that is anymore. No, they don't. But I, don't. I'd record him, and when things would get really difficult in my life, I would go and hide in my closet, and I would listen to the preaching of Pastor Rod Parsley. His voice became a source of strength in my life. And now, all these years later, to get to wow. serve with him, uh, to, to have an office down the hall from him, to travel the world with him, 
uh, to travel the, across the country on behalf of him. It is just an incredible story. Wow. He, um, wow. He has, uh, he's, he's, he's just changed my life. Take us down that. Take a few moments. We, so we, we've taken care of, of just, you know, talking about the importance of legacy and how God is teaching you through legacy and through your spiritual father. Right. But now you're on the big picture. And, and Bishop Amos, I'd love for you to just take our viewers, because there might be a, there right. probably is a lot of people on this program that was not raised in a church that taught the concept of spiritual fathers and mothers and legacy. So let's just talk about that's that's just almost legacy for dummies, okay? I mean, we need to understand what does that mean? Because you know what happens, Pastor, and I know you've heard this many times. When I talk about legacy, especially online and stuff, I'll get comments like, why do you care about you nobody? I don't care about nobody knowing you trying to make yourself out to be a king or something like that. That is not what we're talking about. No, we're not talking no. about pride. We're not talking about I got to make sure that I'm remembered. That's not what this is. So, so take us down that road, Bishop, of the the roadmap so, of for legacy. sure, for sure. So let's just get rid of that religious devil first and Come foremost, on. right? Come on, because here's the deal: it's it's not that from a place of pride of wanting our names remembered or for history to remember us or even those that we love. It's kingdom. It's Bible. And here's what your Bible says, that God had an unusual anointing on Moses. And he told Moses, he said, I'm going to use you to set people free. And Moses said, no, wait a minute. This is too big of an assignment for me. Wait a minute. I, I, I can't be held responsible for this. And he said, if I were to go and speak to the enemy and tell the enemy that the enemy had to let my people free, who am I supposed to tell them sent me? Mm. On whose authority? And your Bible says this. It says, first of all, tell them that the great I am. Mm. I am, because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he is I am. Wow. He said, tell them I am sent you. But then he continues, if we just read the rest of the scripture, it says, tell them that the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent you and given you authority, and this is how I should be remembered in every generation. Wow. You see, legacy is about this. God is desperately looking for some people that he himself can wrap him around their name. God is desperate to use the names of other to others to demonstrate the manifestation of the power and authority of God that's on the earth. Wow. God literally told Moses, I want you to go tell them that the God of your fathers. You see, God's wanting to do something so unusual, so miraculous, mm. so mighty through the life of, of you that is watching today wow. that your name is remembered because of what God did in your life. And so when that devil comes along, when, 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 when that principality comes along and there's a mighty man of God that is new on the earth and is in challenging opposition of darkness and that dark spirit says, well, who sent you? Well, I'll tell you who sent me. Mm. Larry Raglan, he may have lived a hundred years ago, but you know God used him to raise up some mighty men. Men came from all all over the country and and they went back home and they were they were husbands and they were fathers hey devil you may not know me hey. but i was sitting in a meeting when i was just a little kid listening to bishop larry raglan and God. the same god that anointed him to raise up men hey devil he's about to use me to raise up men in my childhood you see in my generation legacy is about letting god be known huh. through our lives wow and i i've not seen anybody model legacy better than than our pastor, uh, Dr. Rob Parsley. I never knew Dr. Sumrall. Right. But I preach all over the country his stories of setting people free from the demonic realm. Yeah, yeah. I never knew Smith Wigglesworth, but yeah. I tell the stories of Smith Wigglesworth. Why? Because my pastor cared enough to preserve the legacy, tell the stories from one generation to another, yeah. to build our faith and let us understand the lineage that we come through. I like to tell people, Bishop, that when I get into a town to preach, and, and I know that Pastor Parsley was there at one time, Dr. Summerall was there, I'll take just a moment, speak to the land and say, hey, devil, you may not know me because I'm the <laughs> no kid on the block, but let me tell you who's in town. Yeah. I'm a son of Dr. Rod wow. Parsley. Wow. I'm a spiritual grandson of yeah. Lester Summerall. Yeah. Yeah. And what God did through yeah. them, hey, devil, I'm about to do the same and to see, you. That, that's the key. That's the key. What God did through them. Yes. What God what did God through them. Did Not through what them. they did. Yes. What God did through them. 
You know, there's legacy of secular people that have right. legacies. And their legacy is is a legacy built on shifting sand. Right. Because their legacy is built on man's achievements. Right. But we're not talking about on the big picture because we're a kingdom show here. Right. We're not talking about the legacy of the accomplishments of man. We're talking about the legacy of what God did through them. Right. You know, you want to really get deep on legacy. You 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 know, when you preach about Paul, when you preach about Peter, you're it's Potter and P, uh, P, Peter and Paul's legacy, because they they we are preaching about what God did through them. When you know, when I'm just thinking off the top of my head, when you know Paul shakes the snake off in the fire, we preach that, we teach that, we read that. But what are we doing? We're really talking about how God preserved the life of a man of God and a miracle, and we use His life and His example and His faithfulness to teach us. That, you know, we need to follow that. You know, we're right. not following the man. We're following God. But we're following the principles that God used through the man. That's and, it. you know, I was raised in a traditional Pentecostal um, denomination like you. And, you know, I thank God for my heritage. But right. the truth is the concept of spiritual fathers was never taught. It was right. that I never, I know, what is that? You know, it was just when, but when it came into my life, when I, when my spiritual father came into my life and began to first pour into my life, and and show me accountability, that's you know, legacy is not just about blessings; it's about accountability. For sure, you know, the greatest example of legacy in our personal lives is our family, right? Our children, our home, and you know, we want it to be you know all you know flowers and and wonderful things, but sometimes we have to discipline. Sometimes right. we have to pour. So I think that legacy, people are afraid of it because they don't really want to fully embrace the the totality of what legacy is. Sure. So, so Bishop, I want, I want to ask you, let's say there's someone that's watching right now, because I believe there is several people are watching right now, that the whole concept of you know, a spiritual father. I mean, this sounds a little like you're just trying to prop up a man and all this. I've got God. I only need God and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Help us understand why it's important to have a covering and why it's important to have a voice that speaks into our lives in every facet of our lives. Well, first of all, Bishop, we have to understand the difference between legacy in the culture and legacy in the church or in the kingdom, right? Yes. And so our culture has no problem with legacy. We understand it and we fully embrace it. It's in the church that we have a difficulty mm. with it. For example, if you look in every major city in America, you're going to see road signs that are named Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Why? Yep. Because it's legacy. That's we good. remember that mighty man of God and how God used him yep. uh, to bring a difference in our nation. Uh, if you go to Washington, D.C., you'll see memorials of all of the great mighty men so and good. women uh, from our heritage that, that we remember them. And we have no problem with that until it gets into the church. But here it is. Watch what the Bible says. Again, because as Pastor Parsley says, the book is right and everybody else is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, David had a son named, named Absalom, and he said this. He said, I have no sons to, to, to carry on my name, and so I'll build a monument mm. and, and we'll name it after me. In the kingdom, legacy is not about getting your name on a building. Legacy is not about getting your name in lights. Legacy is not about getting your names on some street corner. Legacy is about attaching your name to sons. Wow. It's about raising up spiritual sons and daughters and mm -hmm. your name being remembered around the dinner table after you're gone about the way you taught them to pray, the way you taught them to fast, the way you taught them to live. It's, it's about sonship. Watch this. In the Bible, we talk all the time about Elijah and Elisha, right? Right. And Elisha asked for the double portion. What was he asking for? Mm. He wasn't asking to be the successor. That was already determined. So yeah. he's not asking, hey, let me be your successor. He, he was asking for a double portion. And if we look at Scripture in context, we know that the firstborn got a double portion. What was Elisha asking? Elisha was asking Elijah if he would be his spiritual father. I'm mm. looking for sonship. Before you go, 
I want to be wow. the spiritual son. Wow. And what did Elijah say? He said, you've asked for a difficult thing. Yeah. Why? Because it's a lot more difficult to be a son than a servant. And Jesus hasn't taught us that we are simply servants, but we're sons. We're joint heirs. The wow. kingdom is all about sonship. Yes. And legacy is all about sonship. Yes. It's the gospel. God didn't send a servant to die on the cross. He sent his son oh, to die on the cross. That's and so, so good. When you begin to talk about legacy and becoming the spiritual son of somebody else, you're asking for a difficult thing. My the God. standard is higher. The, the commitment is higher. The investment wow. is higher. Spiritual son, spiritual fatherhood, it's a difficult thing. I, I was thinking about that when I was listening about the story, uh, Bishop, of your pastor, uh, who you you gave him authority into your life? Yes, and he yes. called you and he said, "Hey, he said, give the phone to your wife, yes. Sandy, and leave the room." Yes, and he right, had a conversation, did. accountability sure about, did. "Hey, how much time are you spending with your children? Yeah. Are you yeah. studying? Are you reading? Are you praying? Right. Are, you know, what is that? It's accountability. Right. You you weren't you weren't just a servant to your pastor. You were a son of Absolutely, your pastor, yes. which is a difficult thing. It is. Legacy. It's simply spiritual co- accountability. And there is blessing, and you shouldn't be afraid or, or run away from the concept of blessing. If you look in the beginning of the Bible, it says this, God created man, and the next thing he did after he created man was to bless him. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you want to see the desire of something, the original intent of something, you go back to the very beginning. And in the very beginning, God made mankind and then blessed them. It is the intent of God to bless you. And the way he blesses you is through sonship. He blesses you through his son, Jesus. Think about this. This, You you get me excited here, Bishop, because (laughs) I'm thinking about, because I love... I love the Old Testament. I mean, I can't stand these preachers that say, forget about the Old Testament. I love it because it is filled with so many principles that are trying to teach us. They're New Testament principles. The only difference is, they were types and shadows pointing towards how we can actually operate in this through the the power of Jesus. And you think about it, man, this, this, the stories of like um, Jacob and Esau, I mean, they're just, they're, he trades his lineage for, he don't realize what he does went for a bowl of soup, but then, then he realizes real quick, I've lost the blessing. Right. I, I, I was in position, I was in place, but I've lost the blessing. And how many times throughout the Old Testament did it talk about the firstborn? Why? Right. Why was the firstborn so important? Because it was the blessing of the father. It was before before they died, it, the legacy was so huge. Right. They'd prop their almost dead bodies up and just slap their hands on people yeah. so that they could know and everybody could see he touched me. Right. So therefore I carry on his name. Therefore I carry on this family, this 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 entire lineage of what we see before us. It is it has been lost somewhere along the way. We've lost it and we got to have it back. You know, I think about Malachi when he says this one of the signs <clears throat> of the end times I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the right. hearts of the sons to the fathers. So it's almost like a return to an understanding of godly blessing and legacy is a sign of the end times. Yes. I mean, it literally is a part of us seeing the Lord is coming soon because he's returning an understanding of the power of the father's role and the father and the son's role, not just in the natural, but in the spiritual realm. And I believe that's why God is using you so greatly, Bishop, to you know, you you preach in churches all around the country and all around the world, and you come under the banner of legacy. And and I thank God that part of it is, you know, telling this, the legacy of the lineage that you're in now, Pastor Parsley, Smith, Wigglesworth, and, of course, Dr. Summerall, and, and even beyond that, before that, the legacy that goes there. But I think it's more, Bishop, and and I don't know if anybody else has ever said this, but I'm going to say it to you. I think it's it's more than that. I think it's a special anointing that God has put on you, a revelation that he's given you. And I think that's one of the reasons why he drew you to the place where you're at right now to be used the way you are because Amen. God is using you to, he's just constantly giving you downloads on legacy Amen. because that's the heart of, of the world. Think about it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only about the son. son. I mean, am I right? Even in the John three sixteen, it, it was, here's the legacy of is. the kingdom of heaven is that a father sends his only begotten son. You're right. 
listen, there's something in the church world that is so dysfunctional that we've got to break away from. And it's one of the things that we teach at Valor Christian College is that th- this, listen, this is a ministry. It is not an industry. Oh, and we've good. got to quit playing by the same rules of the culture because we're not the culture. We're the church. We're the bride of Christ. Yes. And in, in the culture, you know, uh, if someone was to see one of my two precious daughters that I love more than anything, and they were to say, you remind me of your father. Yeah. If they were to look at, at, at one of them and see their blue eyes and say, well, you look like your father. Or if they were to hear my, my oldest daughter, Tiffany, who is passionate about uh, things that she's involved in. If they were to say, your passion reminds me of your father's passion, nobody's going to say, hey, that's a bad thing. Stop that. You yeah. need to sound less like your father. Think about less this. like your father. You need to be your own thing. Nobody's going to say yeah. that because that's dysfunctional. But in the church, wow. if someone compares me, uh, and, and I'll hear it, you know, I'll go from place to place where you're just a Rod Parsley wannabe. Well, you're absolutely I'm right. I'm a Rod Parsley <laughs> wannabe. I want to be like him uh, when he was facing cancer and science for two years after writing the book Silent No More and mm. defeated that devil wow. of cancer. I want to be just like him, that I'm not timid and yeah. I can know how to yeah. rise up and, and fight. You're absolutely right. I want to be like him. We got to quit trying to be an yeah. original. We got to quit trying to be wow. a, a sound bite and understand that there's blessing. God's not looking for you to be different. He's looking for you to be the same. That's yeah. why he wants to remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why he wants to remember the lineage of the faith. You yeah. don't have to be different. You don't have to be unique. You don't have to go and and, and make your hair. I don't have any, but if I do, <laughs> I don't have to make it 15 different colors and spike it three different directions, just trying to stand out and be unique. This is not an industry. It's a ministry. It's a family that God's called us into. Mm-hmm. And one of the greatest honors in your life is to being being compared to greatness. And Oh, man, you said it there. You said it there. Think, think about Paul. Paul said, You've got 10,000 instructors, instructors. yet you have not many fathers. I have begotten you in the faith. Right. Then he blows their mind. Therefore, follow me. That's it. And and, and, and now listen, the same Paul that taught us about grace, that teaches about the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, all these other things that we teach is the same one also that, you know, nowadays we call it mentorship. There's nothing wrong with that, calling it mentorship. But back then he was saying, look, I don't want you to follow. We, Paul was very clear when they started trying to baptize in his name and they started trying to baptize in the Paul's name. He's like, hold up, hold right, up. Right. Do not bring me into that. I did not save you. I can't heal you. I can't deliver you. Don't you baptize in my name. Right. So he was very clear where he went. He stopped people from worshiping him. But it's the same guy that said, there's an anointing on me. Right. And, and, I, and I've, God has used me to pour into your life. So therefore, you need to understand why you're being discipled. Isn't that what discipleship that's, even that's means, it. Bishop? That's is it. that that we're we're teaching them about Jesus, but you somebody's got to lead and somebody's got to follow in that scenario. John the Baptist had disciples. Right. He was preaching about Jesus, but people followed him while he was telling them about who's coming. So Paul said, "Listen, you got to get this." This is this was a problem back then. So it's a problem now. It's a problem back then too. Two thousand years ago, they did not understand the power of having a man of God right. in your life to pour into them. Has this always been a problem, Bishop? What I mean, am I am I on the right page here? That you, you're you're on it. Listen, you know we 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 have we've drifted. But God has raised up you. He's raised up people like you, like Bishop Jamie Tuttle. The two of you, God has just put a very, very precious anointing on you to raise up men. And 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 under that, I believe God's going to begin to really raise the standard with preachers and pastors wow. through what God's doing through your ministry. Think of the faith. The Apostle Paul, you're absolutely right. He had the ability to look younger men in the eyes and say, follow me. Why? Because I know that my walk with God is so close that when you follow me, you're actually following Christ because that's who I'm following. But today we've got some backslidden, sissified preachers that are afraid to say, follow me. You have preachers that'll stand up in their church and preach a gospel that is foreign to the scripture Mm -hmm. and say, only follow God. Don't follow me. If you put your faith in me, I'll let you down. 
well, why are you letting people down? Why yeah. aren't you exactly what you claim to be? Yeah. We've got to go back to our legacy, wow. to an apostolic anointing, which comes from the Apostle Paul that was so confident in his walk with Jesus that he didn't mind saying to a younger generation, follow me. Mm -hmm. I love that you're so careful and cautious about the men that you have to be a part of your, your movement and your conference. And one of your speakers uh, uh, this weekend, he, he made the comment, he said, speaking to the men in his church, he said, I am the example of what you're supposed to be. And I thought, my goodness, that's legacy. That's the Apostle Paul. Yes. I recognize that. We, we need preachers that, hey, if you're going to preach it, you better live it. Yeah. And you're supposed to be a tour guide, which means you know where you're going. Mm. You know the way of the kingdom. And you, somebody's got to stand up and say to a younger generation, I know you don't know the way, but I've been taught the way, and I'll lead the way. Let's go follow me because I'm following Jesus. That's legacy. <sighs> Wow. Listen, we get some downloads. Y'all don't even know the life-changing word that you're getting right now. You know, I know that you've read Dr. Maxwell's books, uh, yeah. uh, you know, The 21 Laws of Leadership, right. you know, and he defines leadership as influence. Right. Nothing more, nothing less. He said, if you think you're a leader, look behind you. Is anybody Nobody following? There. No. If they're not, you're just taking a walk. Right. You know, so so that's that's what it's at. You know, I'm, you're, I'm hearing you talk about, you know, we need men of God that are going to live it. That are not right. just going to be something in the in the lights and on the camera, but they're really living it. Because why is that important? Number one, it's important for that individual's kingdom for their eternity. But it's also important is that the bottom line is this: if God has given you influence right. in any area of your life. That means people are following your lead. Right. And when you look at the condition of the world we're in, the reason that we're in the condition that we're in is because we've had the legacy of those that turned their back on God, right. the legacy of right. those that chose their own way. Now it's spilled into the pulpits. We have preachers endorsing and accepting abominable lifestyles in the pulpit and what happens? It's just the snowball effect. Right. The legacy of that moment creates generations that get worse and worse and worse because somebody took the wrong road and began to disciple people to follow that. But I believe there's a remnant rising, yes. Bishop. Yes. I really yes. do. It's a small number. Uh, Pastor Miles Rutherford was on our show early on. We first started The Big Picture, and we talked about the remnant, and he said, he said, I got good news and bad news about the remnant. The good news, I mean, the bad news is the bad news is is so much smaller than we ever thought it would be. The good news is it's so it's much, much more stronger, powerful, powerful than we ever thought. Because why? Because men are being men and women are being women of God again. Bishop, do Come you on. see when you're going around the country, is there hope for the church? Oh, is for is sure. something happening? To re uh, is there sure. really a revival? What there, is there, happening? There is revival, and it starts with fatherhood. It starts with people, again, I, these names. That's one of the things I love about City Harvest Network. It's not, you know, we have the covering uh, of Pastor Rod Parsley, uh, but there's also the connection hood of, of the brotherhood. You yeah, know? yes, yes. And, and I love seeing uh, so many of our City Harvest Network people that are on each other's shows and preaching for each other, sharing with each other. I think it's it's the way of the future. It's the way of the present. Revival is happening. And here's what we're seeing. We're seeing that God is raising up men like you, like Miles Rutherford, like Jamie Tuttle, like Brian Bolt. The list could go on and on and on and on. I could name hundreds of people that God is raising up, not just in our tribe. Let me say that, yeah, too. Yeah, that's that, right. That's the right. City Harvest Network is one of many tribes, and we're not the greatest tribe. We're just one of God's tribes. Yes, and, amen. And we're, and we're proud of our lineage, but God has always had more than one tribe, and he always will. Yes. But the apostle said, the apostle Paul said to his spiritual son, he said, I recognize the anointing mm. that's on you. I saw it first in your grandmother, mm. and then I saw it in your mother. And so I think that wow. God is raising up people like you, Bishop, that have the ability that have been around for a while. You're 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 not in you're not a rookie. You're not new to this. You've seen some things, right? Yeah. And so I, I think God has released you and some others into this apostolic assignment that can point to this is an anointing that I recognize. You see, this is not a foreign, uh, perverted version of anointing. I see something in this generation that I saw in a last generation and in a generation before that. What is it? It's legacy. It's purity. It's holiness. It's repentance. It's righteousness. Mm. It's boldness. And it's happening. You know, I, I was just in Los Angeles not long ago and getting ready to go back next month and preach. 
I was there for Bishop Brian Bolt, who serves as an ambassador to City Harvest Network. Uh, everything I do in the U.S. and Canada, he does all over the world, preaching to 20, 30, 40,000 people. Uh, just an incredible, mighty man of God. He's one of my spiritual heroes and a big brother to me. And he was gone on a mission trip, and so I'm to go preach for his church, did the morning service, came back, did the night service. We started about 6 o'clock in the evening. After the service, they took my wife and I, and we had a wonderful time with, with Bishop Brian's wife, uh, Pastor Natalie. And it was close to midnight, because we're just good friends, you know, before they took me back to our, to our car to get us to the hotel. And I heard a noise in the tabernacle. I, I stepped back in there, and 80% of their church what? was still there. The service was over, but they weren't there laughing, joking, high-fiving, not that anything would be wrong with that. They were there praying. What? This was before we saw what God did in Asbury, which was incredible, uh, that God put a spotlight on that, but it's happening everywhere. And listen, if you were above the age of 30 in that church in Los Angeles, you felt like an old man. It's young families. And when I was there, I was preaching holiness and righteousness and wow. repentance, and they couldn't get enough of it. Wow. And at midnight, they were still This is in California, y'all. Are in y'all Los hearing Angeles. it? This, this is in Los in Angeles, Los California. Angeles. Yeah. What? And it wasn't just at his church. My wife and I, we took an opportunity to go to a few different beaches while we were in California, you know. And, and we didn't go to one beach that we didn't see people, young people that were out on the beach having worship sessions oh, what, on what? every single beach that we went to. And we thought, now, we don't ever hear anything about no. this. But yes, there's revival on the earth. Yes, the former anointing has become the current anointing. There's, there's a recognizable anointing that is on the earth right now. And it's not just in Los Angeles. I can tell you story after story. I was recently in New York City, Jersey City, saw the same thing happening there. Young wow. people that are passionate, you know, services that are going uh, late, late, late into the night, early in the morning, miracle signs and wonders because people want the authentic. They want and see, legacy. And see, this is what we were raised in. Right. We were raised in this. We were right. raised in all night church. And then all of a sudden this, talking about legacy, that became a legacy of a group of preachers that decided somewhere through some kind of study, some kind of poll they took or whatever, people don't want that anymore. They want coffee. Right. They want right. donuts. They where, want a, where was a voice yeah. that should have at that moment said, wait a minute, yeah. I don't recognize that anointing. Come on. I don't recognize that. That's strange fire to me. Yes. See, but this time around, although there's still movements that are happening, this time God's got a remnant that is not rising. It's already standing. Yes. It's already speaking and is willing to say, I don't recognize that. That's not of God. That's not of God. I'm looking for what, because listen, when God said, behold, I'm going to do a new thing, yeah. we got. you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible, my pastor says. Yeah. Right? yeah. So when he said, I'm going to do a new thing, well, how do you counter that with Scripture saying there's nothing new ever given under the sun? Hmm. It appears to be a contradiction. No, we're just not reading it in the original language to get an understanding. Wow. When God's saying, behold, I'm going to do a new thing, he's not saying, I'm going to do a different thing. That's uh, the way we hear it. Think he's about not it. saying, I'm going to do it different. He said, I'm going to do it new. I'm going to do it fresh. I'm not changing the ingredients. I'm just making the same thing fresh for you. What? So stop looking for different. Start looking for the same, but it new and fresh for right now. Oh. When he said, behold, do a new thing, he's doing what he did in past generations for the present generation. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about them old school, God parsley <laughs> dominion. Much to be gained yes, to a return yes. to the discarded the values, values of the past. past. Yes. I mean, this is not a new thing. No. It's just the real thing. It's going back to the original. I mean, if we want to listen, if we want to see the move of God of Acts chapter two, yeah. then we got to be the church of Acts chapter two. That's it. If we want to see the power that Paul walked under, then we got to emulate Paul. If we want to see right. uh, the church operating the gifts of the spirit correctly, then we have to go back and Listen to the words of correction. That's if we it. want to look around and see that the return of Christ is is near and imminent, we talk a lot about end times here. Signs in the heavens and the earth beneath. But another sign is you got to be able to identify in the last days perilous times will come. And you got a group of people in the church that's not even calling those things that are listed in the perilous times, even seeing anymore. And then you've got, you know, 
you know, all this stuff that's going, we got to have voices that will co- arise, not judgmental. Listen, I know I can feel, right. I can feel it right now. I can, I can almost anticipate the comment section. What's going to happen? People's going to be like, oh God, y'all are them people. <laughs> I, th- I was following you, Pastor Larry, but now you're getting off in, I knew you was trying to be a celebrity preacher and all that. Listen, you're you're filtering this through a stupid voice that you've been Carnal. listening to trying to mold what you think is happening right here. This show is not about promoting a man. This show is not about promoting people. This show is about getting properly aligned so that we can be blessed. I think about Psalm 133, Bishop, where he says, how beautiful it is when the brethren dwell together in unity. Yeah. And he says, like the anointing, listen to me, Listen, big picture, that flows down from the head onto the beard and to the body. There is an order of how the oil flows. And if you don't get the order of how the oil flows, you know, you... Right in here, it's pretty important. It's the beard, okay? My beard game ain't nowhere near as good as yours, okay? <laughs> I still got a baby face. This is about as much as I'll ever get. I ain't never going to have one of them Paul Goodwin beards or anything like that or, you know, Duck Dynasty beards. Right. But, but I tell our church all the time that you got to understand that the, the head gets the oil. The beard is next that he lists. And the beard is the leadership. The beard is covers the mouth. The beard is covers the part so good. that delivers the vision. And and you got so many dead, dried up bodies of believers that are hungry for God, but they can't get the oil because you got so many people trying to hoard it right here at the beard, and they're not releasing it. They're not encouraging sons and daughters down here. They're not taking what God has given them and allowing it to flow through them. That's it. And when we get out of that position, we wonder what's happened to the church. How did the church ever get to this place? It's because celebrities decided to hold everything right here. Oh, come on. But I'm telling you, we've got a group of true, genuine men and women of God that are saying, let me be a conduit. Right. Let me be a father and son. What kind of father doesn't want their son right. to go further than them? Right. Are we preaching, Bishop? Is That's this it? You're it. Listen. Listen. I want. Listen. I want to do oh. something. I want to do something. I want to turn you loose. I okay. want. I want to put this camera on you, because for those that could hold on enough to this point right now, you're yeah. you're you're hungry. You're saying, "Help me fully understand why I need to even care." about legacy, not just right now, but for my children and for the impact of our world. Can you take a few minutes and just really take us down that journey? Because I think the people that have survived to this point, Bishop, are ready to fully understand what we're talking about. Come on. I feel like I'm sitting on the bench saying, put me in, coach, put me in. Listen, I'm sorry that there have been people in your life that have betrayed betrayed you, neglected you, and have let you down. People are people. But it does not change the truth that God manifests himself in the lives of others. And listen, I'm going to share this with Valor Christian College here in a few weeks. The man and the mantle. We get it wrong. Because you've been hurt by other men, you refuse to follow a man, and you get your eyes on a mantle. But God never intended for your eyes to be focused on a mantle. He wants to put people in your life and for your eyes to be focused on people. How do I know that? Because when Elisha asked for a double portion, when he asked for sonship before Elijah left, what was Elijah's response? He said, not if you can see my mantle, then you can get it. He said, if you can see me, I'm leaving this world in a theatrical exit. There's going to be a chariot. There's going to be fire. God's about to take me out of this world. And he said, if you can still keep your eyes on me in the midst of the theatrics, in the midst of my exit, in the midst of all of the emotions that you have, if you can see me in all of it, then you'll be worthy to receive sonship and that double portion that you've asked for. You see, Elijah said, look at me, keep your eyes on me. You've got to become the person that can look to another generation and say, if you'll keep your eyes on me, you will see the goodness and the greatness of God. For I am a messenger of heaven, anointed by God on the earth to do the work of God. Keep your eyes on me. Well, that's Old Testament. Let's go to New Testament. The writer of Hebrews says this, remember your leaders. What? Mm. Not forget them. 
not act as if they never lived. In fact, the Bible says to give double honor, yep. not go into idolatry, but double honor. There's a difference. It says, remember your leaders, and it says, examine, watch this now, examine the outcome of their lives. Here's, here's why you keep getting hurt by people, because you're talking about people that you never examine the outcomes of their life. You listen to a soundbite, you listen to a voice, something that sounds good. You look at somebody that's going viral on TikTok or on, mm. uh, on some other social media platform, and you begin to follow them, and then they let you down, but you follow them not in a biblical way. God said, remember the leaders and consider, consider, wow. or it says examine the outcome of of their life. In other words, when you're choosing who you're going to follow and who you're going to line up with, you ought to look at what have they actually accomplished in life, right? So good. I, I didn't just look at Bishop Larry Ragland and say, uh, you know what, man, he's got a great podcast and he's got a great voice and people are following him. I, I want to get connected with him. No, I know his story. I know that before he had a building, he was preaching in a tent. I know the hell that he's been through. I know the times that, that he should have quit and everybody said that he would quit, but he didn't quit. I, I know a, a little something about the outcome of his life. I know something about, about how God used him to raise up an education system. I know how there are other men that, that will say that this is my spiritual father and they're better in the kingdom because of Bishop Larry Ragland. You see, I consider what has he actually accomplished in his life. So Hebrew says, remember your leaders, consider the outcome, not the soundbite, mm. not the gifting, not the talent, consider the outcome. What have they accomplished? Then watch. It says, imitate or you could translate it in the Greek, the Bible is literally telling you to be a copycat of wow. their faith. <laughs> wow. You see, Pastor, I, listen, that's, I am that's not deep. saying that's deep. Wow. that I need to copy the way I, I talk to be like Rod Parsley, right? No. We're both Kentucky hillbillies, so we sound a little bit alike. And if you're around somebody long enough, you'll pick up on some things. That's not what I'm saying. No. I'm not saying I need to dress like him, right? My wife told me a long time ago, honey, quit trying to dress like a 67-year-old man. You're not even 40 yet, amen? <laughs> I'm not saying that we imitate their personality and that we imitate all. I'm saying what the Bible says. Yes. You imitate their faith. And yes. why? The writer of Hebrews says that you remember your leaders, you consider the outcome of their life, and you imitate their faith. Why? For Christ is never changing. From generation to generation to generation, Christ is never changing. What God has done through a past generation, he's desperate to do in a present generation. Mm. Mm. Listen, wow. this is a conversation that God had with Joshua. Now, your Bible says, uh, listen, your Bible says that Moses was a servant of God, but Joshua was a servant of Moses. Mm. Well, I thought I wasn't supposed to follow a man. Well, if you can't follow a man, you'll never be selected to follow God. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, yeah. You, Moses, you own it. this you, is what you, the Bible says. Moses was God's servant, and Joshua was the servant of Moses. So then, when Moses went to heaven and God was done with Moses on the earth, God looked around and said, I've got to put this anointing on somebody. Somebody's got to inherit this legacy. He didn't look for the complainer. He didn't look for the backslider. Wow. He didn't look for the naysayer. He looked for the servant. And he has this conversation with Joshua yeah. and says, Joshua, let's just be real for a moment. You just know, be God real. Likes to Come have on. Real talk. Real he says, talk. You'll, you'll never be like Moses. How would you like to take a job and the first thing they tell you is you'll never be as good as the guy that had it yeah, before you? Yeah, yeah. That's literally the, the conversation that God has with Joshua. He says, you'll never be like Moses. I knew him face to face and wow. the wonders I did through him. You'll never be Moses. He said this. He said, but because you served him, you've now inherited every promise that I ever had for him. And so you become a servant Ser serving, serving is the language of our Savior. Wow. And so when you become a servant of another man, you receive the anointing and the promises of that man. The kingdom of God is all about sonship and yeah. servanthood. That's, so That's what you need to hear. Let's shake off that religious <clears throat> devil and hear what we're telling you today. God is about family and order, yeah. not chaos. Yeah. And yeah. he wants to place people in your life, and he wants That's to so place good. you in the lives of others to be the visible manifestation of the kingdom of God on the earth. There are blessings 
that you can only receive only. through servanthood or through legacy. Now, now listen, uh, as we wind this program down, we man, we we could do a series on <laughs> legacy. Maybe we, we maybe we need to. Maybe we need to do because it's so deep. I mean, it there's is. just not enough time in one show to reveal this. What I believe one of the most important subjects that that has been neglected Amen. for years. You know, I think about you know you talk about legacy. Think about how God uses the family. In, right. in, in Ephesians chapter 5, and then he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. In other words, if you understand the family, you can understand how I operate. Right. And, then, and then he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, has given them power to become the sons of God. And if sons of God, then heirs with Christ and join heirs with Christ. And that's legacy that, you know, you've inherited you know, the legacy of what he received as as being the only begotten son, even though he is God, we understand that Jesus is God. But when he became that body, he he moved into a legacy position where we can we can understand the Godhead through that. So right. so so Bishop, as we come to a close here, first of all I want to say thank you. And I want to oh, show I want to show uh some people one more time how they can connect with you because yeah. they may want to learn more about the network. There may be some pastors on here, some leaders, some some fivefold ministry gifts. But more than anything, they they may want to have you come and speak. They may want to get to know more about what God is doing in you and Amy's life. Uh, they can just go to cityharvest.network, and I'll link that down in the comment section below. Uh, because I think it's very very important. God is using you on the next on, on a next level type anointing for this understanding. So just, you know, we've got about, let's see, we've got about uh, three minutes left. Can you do one more thing, Bishop? Can you look into that camera and can you pray for that man or woman, regardless of how old they are, to show them it's not too late for you to take on a sense of ownership of the moment, that no matter where you're at in your walk with God, God has called you to not just be to, to get up under someone, but to also be a covering and to be a, no one is exed out of this. Everyone has been called to be a instrument of legacy and an instrument of God's legacy through you and through your life. So could you take a couple of minutes and pray for that person that, that thinks I'm not worthy of this. I could never be a leader and important to somebody's life, but we, you and I both know that yeah. no one is out side of the boundaries of God using them. So could you pray for them, lead them, anything the Lord lays upon your heart? Honored, honored. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that you are indeed a good, good father. Yes. And we thank you for every individual, every family that is tuned in to this broadcast. And Lord, I just pray that you would open up the hearts and open up the minds. Lord, that you would teach men and women Especially, I, I, just, I just see there's, there's several right now, Father, that need to understand today that they are never too old to become a son. My God. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, that it was in my, in my later years, Lord, not, not my childhood, wow. but in later years that you taught me through the life of another what it meant to be a son. And, Lord, I thank you that there are men out there right now listening that have never been fathered, that are turned off by this. And Lord, I just pray that you would heal the emotional wounds uh, wounds from the absence of an earthly father in their life. And I pray, God, that you would give alignment for their assignment, that you would give covering for their calling. Lord, that you would place the right people in their life. Not perfect people, but real yes, people. Yes. Men that can look at other men and say, son, I've messed up, and I've got a baggage, and I've, I've got things that I had to deal with, but here's how you get it under the blood. Here's how you deal with it. Lord, I, I pray for men today that they would look to other men. Lord, I, I, I pray for, for women today that they would look to other women. Yeah. I pray, God, for covering. I pray for connection. I pray for relationship. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray against that spirit that is on the earth and has tormented your believers since the beginning of time of making us feel that we are isolated and all alone. Lord, when you've got people just outside the cave waiting to connect with us. So, Lord, bless this audience. Bless these people. Lord, I I pray for a good report that Bishop Larry will hear from literally hundreds of people that will say, I'm walking in new relationships. I'm walking in new connections. And that I am becoming a father to my sons and daughters. Lord, 
bless them with the anointing of legacy. And Lord, as Moses, you blessed him and he put up his hands in the air and he split the water and, and he ran from his enemy. But Joshua, oh Lord, he put his hands up in the air and split the water and he ran after his enemy. Yes. Lord, because it gets better and better and better from one generation to another. So by faith in the name of Jesus, I prophetically release legacy anointing greater in the name of Jesus. Hey, in the Amen. name of Jesus. If, if you prayed Amen. with Bishop, comment below and let us know that. We appreciate that so much when you let us know that that prayer touched your life. And let me just jump on and say that if you have not got a copy of my book, all you got to do is go to LarryRagland.com. When you go to LarryRagland.com, you'll see the copy of the book there. All you got to do is click on that. Everything that you do through our website is going to help us in our television ministry now as we're touching the world through television, through our YouTube channel, through the, all that ha that God is doing. We appreciate that. There's other way, other things, other merchandise, all that that you can get there. And we also want to remind you that every Monday night, Sandy and I co-host a show, a two-hour-long news show where we give you a perspective, a kingdom perspective, like you will not get anywhere else. And if you don't already know about that program, please join us. And then every Wednesday night, we do a verse-by-verse -verse Bible study of some something in Scripture right now. We're, if you're watching this live, we're doing a series called Snake Bitten, and it's been very powerful. It's been the most watched thing that we've done so far, and that's Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time. And, of course, don't forget, every Thursday night we have the Kingdom Intelligence Report, the four mighty men of God that are on the screen here every Thursday of the week. They are coming on here and giving a Kingdom perspective. And, uh, and so don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Bishop Amos, thank you for being oh, a part you. of the big picture. Thank you for being coming down to Birmingham, Alabama, and you'll be coming back in October uh, where we, the man that you keep hearing us talk about, Dr. Rod Parson, will be with us, Miles Rutherford, and many of you love Pastor Mike Signorelli out of New York City. He will be with us as well. And then none other than Pastor Paul Begley will be that Sunday. So, so you're talking about a legacy week of Elevate Conference, Come and on. we'll tell you more about that. So thank you again, Bishop, for being That's a part right. thank you of the Big me. Picture. And to the Big Picture audience, we want to say thank you for deciding to choose the Big Picture tonight to watch and to be a part of it. Share this broadcast, and let's build up a world that is changing, the wor a, a, a body, a family, I should say, that's changing the world. We want to remind you that no matter what the show is, we got to always tell you, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. We'll see you next time with a big picture. God bless.